What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Exploring Cyprus by Winter. In this episode, we leave our apartments super early in the morning and we are heading towards the Oleastro Museum where we learn about the process of making olive oil. Because, is it? We're trying to figure out if this is a one-way street, but this is the way that the GPS is leading us. The signs are pointing down this way for like the museums and shit like that. It shouldn't be, right? Because the... You get signs our way too. There were signs pointing that we could turn this way, right? Yeah. Go until we see otherwise, I think. Just stay cautious and stay uh, left-ish. Is this person flashing? Yeah, they don't seem... They don't seem... Yeah, he like, don't seem phased, right? Yeah, he don't seem phased. So the route there took us through a sleepy village with these extremely narrow streets and, according to Kelly, cute houses. Look at how cute this house is! Alright, so we just made it to the Olive Museum, Mill, <laughs> Oleastro, and the first thing you smell as soon as you get out is olives. In Cyprus, there's a saying that there is an olive tree for every man, woman, boy and girl. And while driving throughout the country, I just couldn't help but agree. The Olive Park was spacious and we basically had it all to ourselves. There are a number of exhibits sharing information about this tiny fruit's importance throughout history. Uh, from classical Athens and Rome until the Ottoman Empire, olives were considered wealth. Therefore, rebels were often punished with the burning or cutting down of their olive groves. Precious commodity, right? So this exhibit here that you see, this is basically a representation of how uh, salesmen back in the day would play their trade of olive oil. Got the guy up front. Donkey loaded with olive oil and he ready to sell some oil to the people. Yeah. <laughs> Kumar, things have uh, escalated quickly. Oh, hello, Kamar's video. <laughs> hello there. We've named him Merlin. Where are Because he looks like a wizard. Yeah. He was used to crush the grapes. The juice was later separated from the skins. For centuries, people have used these same techniques to pick olives, either manually or with sticks. More recently, they've used combs, electric rigs, and vibrators. Uh, just behind here, we've got some caves. We're gonna go and check out them caves and see what is on the inside. And, oh, uh, we can't see anything. Let me brighten this shot up a little bit. Looks like a painting of a mountainside with olive trees. So this guy here, he's got a stick to knock the olives out of the trees. This guy is in the top picking olives. And this dude, he's the collector dude. Button, so we waited for you to get it because she's been dying to press the button. Press the button. I guess this all comes to life, maybe? Uh, sure. In the years before the use of electricity, people used water power. They created water mills which activated other machines. In Cyprus, water was used to power the grain mills. The production of olive oil is characterized by extreme conservatism, as the equipment used in the first century, i.e. the millstones, were still used in Cyprus and in other Mediterranean countries as late as the last century. The millstones were either manually or animal driven. Donkeys were the most common animals used because they are the most tenacious and they're cheaper than horses. So when goes to meet Elias, why are you licking the fence, Elias? <laughs> Yeah, that, don't you? Oh, you know what this is, right? What it was. It's like a bean. I thought it was, um... Let me see. Let me see yours, good. Ew, Gus! Oh, oh, whoa! Gus! Wow! <laughs> well, then you need to get this headbutt. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Oh! Oh. There you go, Gus. Come on. And... <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> no, I don't want to feed. I'm scared of the goat. Babe, I'm scared. Baby, try it. Do it or else Gus Try will it. come over and headbutt him. <laughs> I think, I think, I think you can still headbutt him either way. Gus is just like a bully. <laughs> Gus, you're a bully. Grapes, yeah. Ah, no, it's finished, no, it's finished. yeah. <laughs> but apparently the goats like the grapes. Ah. And that's the great bush. Oh, for the donkey. I got a friend. Ah, <laughs> oh, can I see? 
Ah. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. While feeding the animals, Lena came to find us because some farmers had just come to the mill with fresh olives and she wanted us to witness the process firsthand. I thought that that was a very kind thing to do. The Astro Museum and Mill is a family owned business and we met Lena just from the brief interaction that we had with her. I could tell that she was really passionate and she took great pride in her work. My pleasure. This is her little menu. Should you like to order something to drink? Mm -hmm. Perhaps a drink, sir, at the back. I'll be back in a moment with your tasting, everyone, and then I will start the video. While watching a video about the history of the liquid gold that they call olive oil, Lena brought us a menu. To be honest with you, I love olive oil, but I hate the taste of olives. So the girls managed to convince me that fresh olives tasted better than the canned ones. Uh, it's a different kind of, kind of bread than the one you tasted the olive oil earlier on. So there you go. Oh, oh, man. Only on Sundays. It's delicious. Thank yeah, you. So, well, Sunday bread, all in the church bread. Bread <laughs> <laughs> cheers. Bread cheers. Bread cheers. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> so good. After trying Lena's fresh olive paste on this homemade bread, I was converted. Cool. So we're heading off to the next location, which is an ancient ruins somewhere in that direction. There goes the baker with the We just stopped in this little cozy town to grab some coffee. Yeah. I it was gonna be an animal. This place here. <laughs> Anyways, this is the Carob Museum. And as you can see, it's closed. Remember the food that we gave to the animals earlier? Well, that's what a carob is. It's not just for animals, we can eat it too. Well, just too bad for us, the museum was closed. I think that the cozy village of Anojaira was one of our favorite spots so far. Driving from Anojaira to the Korean archeological site took us about 40 minutes. The drive was scenic, but I didn't risk filming. Now, you're probably wondering why. Well, the situation in Cyprus is a lot more complex than just the division between north and south. Our drive took us through Akotiri, hope I said that correctly, and this is a British overseas territory. And it's also home to a British military base. So we didn't have to do like checkpoints or cross any borders or any of that kind of stuff. But as you can imagine, filming while driving through is prohibited. So upon entering the visitor center, there is a scale model of the whole site. And this is really helpful because it helps you to really just get a feel for the layout and how best to approach it. Kurian was an important ancient kingdom in Cyprus and today is one of the more popular tourist attractions. The entire site was strategically built on a hill with scenic views of the lush green fields and the ocean below. So welcome to is that Eustolius House? There are 11 sites that are open for visiting and we started with the house of Eustolius. It was excavated in 1938, thought to be a palace. It's from the Roman period, but was drastically altered during the third and fourth centuries AD. Also, oh, that's the inscription. Enter to thy house, good fortune, and may thy coming bless this house. Oh man, that sucks. But the little we could gather is that the citizens of Kurian once had considerable wealth. Uh, and there was an earthquake. Again, we got more mosaics down here. The fact that the archaeological site is all outdoors was both a good and a bad thing. Because we went in the winter, uh, the heat wasn't ridiculously overbearing, but I could only imagine how much of a different experience it would be if it was summertime. So what are you looking at here? This is, uh, well, was a house. Um, it's just the skeleton of the house. And there was an earthquake here back in, I think it was the, was the fourth? Yeah, mid fourth century. 
And when they found the house, basically they found like the husband, the wife, uh, the kids, uh, found the skeletons at the front there. There was like a whole lot of distraction and stuff that happened um, right here. The kingdom of Kurian, eventually it was destroyed by an earthquake. And one of the sites to be seen is this earthquake house. So we're still here at the Kurian archeological site and it's unreal how peaceful it is in this entire area. Like it's really peaceful, very relaxing. And we just left the earthquake house and behind me is an ancient structure. <laughs> this is the Roman Agora area. I was just saying to the girls how like, I never been really into history like that. Like the more we travel, and especially being here like right now, like knowing that I'm surrounded by like tons and tons of history is actually opening up my appetite for just getting to know more about, about the world and world history and history of other cultures. And that's why travel is so good and so important because it opens your mind, it teaches you about other cultures and other people's way of life and you get to learn some stuff. Meet some cool people along the way. Oh, actually, here we go. It is a swim, yeah, it's a swimming basin, y'all. Nine meters in diameter. One meter down. So what did you learn? I learned that Achilles has a house and okay. the gladiators have a house. And there's a trinkalinkalinkum. Mm. <laughs> Different from <laughs> the dinkalinkalinkum. <laughs> It's easy to get confused. Cool. So it feels like six, but it's 3.30. Like maybe we can find our way down to that beach area and then just grab a little snackaroo. Yeah. We didn't visit all 11 sites, but it was still really amazing just to be surrounded by hundreds upon hundreds of years of history. Now we came down to the beach side. Um, not too far from where we just were. Cool, we can grab some food and some drinks and watch the beautiful sunset. Thank you. In the next episode, the temperatures are really gonna drop because we're gonna leave the coast of Limassol and we're gonna head up into the Trodos Mountains for a few days. So if you've been following this Cypress series from the beginning, guys, we're just about halfway through. I want to thank you so much for joining me on this journey. And if this is your first time on the channel, yo, welcome. I hope you stick around. And if you see a reason to subscribe, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace and love. Where do I see Prince Charming? I feel That's like the cute to put the camera on you. Oh, me. Prince Charming.